This Plinko feature video will cover using the Link to SQL Profiler by hibernating Rhinos. The Link to SQL Profiler is a great tool for optimizing your data access layer, and we enjoyed working with it so much while working on Plinko that we have decided to make a video about how easy and convenient it is to use. Configuration is quick and easy, and it offers you features such as stack traces, alerts, and tips on optimizing your code. That includes using Plinko. So, if you're impressed with this tool, then after the video is over, be sure to check it out at l2sprof.com. So let's start with how easy it is to get the Linked SQL Profiler working with your application. Here I have the latest tracker sample application, which can be downloaded from codesmith.googlecode.com. And all I've had to do to integrate it with the Linked SQL Profiler is add a reference to hibernatingrhinos.profiler.appender to my tracker MVC UI project. And then I've had to add two lines of configuration to my application start in the global ASX file. First, we call the linked SQL profiler dot setup profiling for pass in our data context. So in this case, the tracker data context and that context's mapping cache. Then all we need to do is call the linked SQL profiler dot initialize. That's it. This website is now set up to run Plinko with the linked SQL profiler. So now I already have the website and the profiler running. So we can see the profiler here, but I've cleared out the log so we can start fresh for this example. And then here in my browser, we can see that I've already logged into the website. So let's take a moment to hit a few pages. Let's start by going into the users. And then let's go ahead and view a user. And we can scroll down and click on edit for this user. So now notice that while we've been navigating, the profiler has been busy in the background capturing everything that we've been doing. So now if we take a look, we can see that it's been capturing the SQL statements. It's even been capturing the data contexts that are being created by the application. And we can see a lot of details about these queries. We can click and we can see the actual SQL that was generated. We can see the params that were passed in. We can see a stack trace and tell exactly where our code has been called. We can even double click on that stack trace. And then if we go back to the solution, it will have taken us to the line that generated that particular SQL statement. So here we can see we're getting by a user. But that's not all. We can also see the row count that our queries are bringing back, the duration that they're taking to complete the call. We can even see alerts, but we'll get back to that in a moment. Notice that we can click on this analysis tab here, and we can get a bunch of different ways to view our data to get a better analysis of what's going on. We can look at the unique queries and see each time a query was called. So we can see that this query was called once and this query twice. We can even analyze these by method, and then we can see what our user controller is calling. So here in the user controller's index action, we call this SQL statement. And because this is a website, we can even sort the queries by URL. We can see exactly what URL is calling what in the database. So the profiler is capturing lots of data and giving us lots of ways to view that data. But now, let's take a look at what the alerts show us. I'm going to go ahead and clear this log, step back into the website. Let's take a look at what our dashboard is doing. So when I click the home page, that took us back to our dashboard. Let's see what the profiler has to say about that. Hmm, notice that the profiler has given us a red alert for this particular set of SQL calls. And the alert is a select n plus one. So let's go ahead and read more about that. Now by clicking that link, it's taken us to the l2sprof.com site. It's going to tell us about that particular alert. The select n plus one error is implying that we're making too many synchronous database calls in a row. So this particular page offers some solutions to that. In this example, it's offering the suggestion that you use load options to solve their particular example problem. But also, if we come down here to the very bottom, it's going to suggest that Plinko offers future queries to help solve the issue of having too many queries being called in a row. So let's go back to the profiler, and let's use our stack trace to see where this is being called. So if we double click on our home controller and go back to Visual Studio, it's taken us to the location where all these database queries are being executed. Now we can see here that we're making a lot of database queries in a row. We're calling a user, and then we're getting a series of tasks, we're getting some counts. So this is not very optimal. Now as you may have guessed from the uh, big code block above that's commented out, I already have a solution for this. So we're going to go ahead and comment out the existing code, and comment back in what we have up here. And notice what this is doing. We're making the same series of queries, only now, instead of ending them, boy, I'm having a hard time with the scrolling. Only now, instead of ending them with a to list, materializing each query in real time, we're calling a dot future against the end, or a future count. 
This is going to use the Plinko feature of the future queries to batch up all these queries and go get them in a single execution. But I need to make one more change to make sure this compiles. We're going to have to comment out a little more code. We need to change these values in our model here from being just integers to future values. So that's going to help support our future count. So if we rebuild this, everything has succeeded. And now this particular action, the index action on the home controller, should use future queries rather than go and getting all these queries one at a time. So let's come into the profiler and let's clear that out. And then let's go back to our page here and refresh. And now that that's refreshed, let's see what the profiler had to say about this. Now we've only made two queries. We got a user and then we had a series of select statements that if we look at the details of this, we can see this was our batch query in action, query one, two, three, etc. And there are no more alerts. So the link to SQL Profiler helped us identify a problem, it gave us a suggestion for how to fix it, and then it verified that that fix has optimized our code. So that's some very cool stuff. Let's take a look at one more example. Let's go into our tasks. Let's try to update several of these at once. I'm going to grab all the in-progress tasks. I'm going to change them to a status of waiting on someone else. Now if we step back into our profiler, you can see a new red flag has been thrown here. Large number of individual writes. So once again, if we read a little more, this error is just telling us that we're making too many calls to the database in a row. And the difference between this and the select M plus one is that we're actually writing out to the database. So again, let's step into the profiler, select this, take a look at our stack trace, and go see what's going on in our code. So it jumped us into our update status action inside of the task controller. We can see here that in a for each loop, we're looping through and getting records and submitting changes x times in a row. So obviously this is a pretty bad and pretty engineered problem for this demo. So let's go ahead and comment this out. And let's use the batch updates, another great Plinko feature that's going to let us, instead of looping through this and updating our records, just generate an update statement and update all our records at once. So once again, we're going to build. And then we'll come in here and clear out our log. And then notice before I navigate away from this page, by the way, that it mentions Plinko offers a batching feature that can help us here, which is exactly what we're using. So if I close this page and we try doing our update again, and this time I'll set all of these back to in progress. We can see in our profiler that we have no more red flags. We're no longer making a series of select and save statements. Instead, now we're actually generating an update statement using the Plinko batch feature. So again, the link to SQL Profiler helped us identify a problem, gave us a suggestion to fix it, and then verified it after we made the fix. So it's that easy to plug in the link to SQL Profiler to your application. Just add one reference and two configuration statements. And I hope you've seen here just how useful it can be at identifying and helping you optimize or fix problems. So that concludes this video over how to use the link to SQL Profiler with Plinko. We hope you found it to be both helpful and informative. Please feel free to check out the link to SQL Profiler at l2sprof.com or watch additional Plinko feature videos at plinko.com. My name is Tom DuPont, and thank you very much for using the link to SQL Profiler with Plinko.